Hi, everybody. This is Sarah again. We're going to go ahead and get started. Uh, we wanted to start today with just a few brief words from our CEO to introduce platform and kind of why we decided to uh, build Juristat platform. So we're going to go ahead and get started with that. Uh, so thank you very much for joining us. And here is Drew. Hi, I'm Drew Winship, co-founder and CEO of Juristat. I'm incredibly excited to introduce you to our newest tool, Platform. Platform is the culmination of over a year's worth of work driven directly by feedback from you, our clients. Five years ago, we launched our first examiner reports, and a response from the industry was incredible. Today, hundreds of patent professionals log in every month to use our examiner reports, art unit reports, and business intelligence data to improve their practice. However, with each new client we gained over the past five years, we would be inundated with requests for additional charts, tables, and filters in our products. As growth accelerated faster and faster, so did our clients' needs. About a year ago, we realized feature requests were destined to outpace our engineering resources. We needed to rethink the problem. So we asked ourselves, what if? What if we gave you, the customer, access to every bit of data we had? What if you could see every RCE, every prior art citation, every bit of rejection text, every examiner name, everything? What if we allowed you to filter and sort our database on hundreds of different variables, enabled you to search claims text, appeals, and other key documents in the image file wrapper so you could build custom data sets from a single application to everything in our industry-leading data set of 9.7 million patent applications? And then, what if we gave you an elegant user interface to allow you to view your results the way you want? bespoke charts, custom tables, a list of applications, or a seamless individual app viewer that makes Pair obsolete? What if you could build your own analytics from millions of potential combinations, create and save your own data sets, export your results, upload your own custom data, and set email alerts to any app you wanted? Well, welcome to Platform. We are eager to show you what Platform can do today, but we are even more delighted about what we have coming down the pipeline for next year including a more powerful custom graph builder, metadata tagging, IPR PGR data, and advanced alerts. Furthermore, Juristat now truly is a platform on which other applications can sit to more easily embed into your workflows. We have built integrations with document management systems, office action response shell providers, and many more. We are so passionate about what we've built for you. So sit back as our team walks you through the most powerful features of Juristat platform. Welcome to the future of patent prosecution analytics. All right. Well, with that, we are going to go ahead and get started with a walkthrough of Juristat platform. So uh, just to give you a quick introduction, for those of you that I don't know, my name is Sarah Garber, and I am the director of client success over at Juristat. And I have one other person with me, uh, Parker Brogdon, who's a member of our marketing team. Say hi, Parker. Hey, guys. How's it going? <laughs> Um, if you guys have any questions at any point throughout the webinar, please feel free to uh, click on that Q&A box at the bottom of the Zoom um, view. Uh, we'll make sure to get to those questions at different points throughout the webinar. Back to you, Sarah. Thanks, Parker. Um, so he's going to be keeping an eye on the chat box or the Q&A box. So if you do have questions, feel free to drop them in there as we go along. Uh, we will stop kind of in the middle to take questions and see you know, how people are doing and make sure that uh, you don't have any questions before we launch into the kind of the second half of our walkthrough. Um, so for those of you that have logged into Juristat since, I think, Monday, September 24th, uh, you may have seen the screen that you're looking at right now previously. So this might be familiar to you, but for those of you that have not logged in, um, this is what you will see the next time you log into Juristat. So what this is, is asking you to define a default view. And the reason that we ask you to do that, um, and you can always skip it if you don't if you don't want to have a default view for for any reason, you can always just click not now. But the reason that we ask you to do that is so that when you log in, you're automatically going to see applications that matter to you. So most folks decide to uh, you know set their default view to applications that are either assigned to the firm that they work for or the company that they work for, so that they're immediately kind of in their own application set. So you know that's probably what you're going to be doing most of the time when you log in. So just to make that a little bit easier, we provide you the ability to set that as your view once you log in every single time. So just as an example, I'm going to select an assignee. 
Uh, I'm going to select Ford. So to pick an assignee, you can just start typing the name, click on it when you find the one that you're interested in. You do have the option to enter a registration number if you want to do that, but that is optional. And then click Next. And the next screen, uh, defining your default view, gives you some options in terms of what information you want to see about the applications that uh, match that first filter that you set. So right now I'm going to select what information I want to see about Ford Motor Company's applications. And so right now in the default, kind of in the default view, uh, we have some, some views set for you. So we have some information there. So we can either remove some information or we can always reorder the information by dragging and dropping those kind of boxes into whatever order kind of suits your, your needs. And then we have a ton of other information that we can add to this as well. So just kind of kind of slowly scrolling through there, we can see that this is a pretty long list. Um, we have about 125 pieces of information about each and every application. And so uh, we're not going to go through all of those today, obviously, but I just I want to make sure that you know that those are there for you and you can feel free to kind of search and uh, scroll through those uh, whenever you have a chance to log in next so you can get an idea of the, the breadth of information that's available. But assuming we're fine with uh, our kind of default view here, we can go ahead and click Next and we'll be taken directly into Juristat platform. So what we're looking at right now, and you'll see the search my default view has been updated. So you'll have a saved search that's your default view. And what we're looking at now is just a list of all of the applications displayed in this table that are assigned to Ford Motor Company or whatever entity that you selected during setup. So what we're looking at is just a list of the applications. And then across the top, each column represents one of those kind of pieces of information that we selected in that second setup screen. So we can see we have the application number, filing date, the current status of the application, firm at disposition, examiner, et cetera. And right now, uh, they are sorted by... Uh, you know, filing date. So they're probably not the, not the, mo uh, might not have been assigned to an examiner yet. So something that we can also do is we can say that, you know, I want to limit my view to something a little bit more discreet. So maybe I don't want to see all of Ford Motor Company's applications as soon as I log in. So one thing that you can do is use this series of filters that's across the left hand side. And you can use these to kind of slice and dice your data down into whatever view is going to be most helpful, helpful for you. So the first thing that I'm going to do, I'm going to add a filter to say, okay, uh, I want to just see applications that were filed prior to, say, December of 2016. So these are going to be applications that are a little bit more active. And just hit apply to see uh, those applications only. So right now, platform is finding those applications. And we can see we have a little bit more information about those. Just in terms of navigating through platform, uh, what we just did was to apply what we call a filter. So that allows us to break down information by uh, you know, a ton of different metrics or a ton of different information about applications. So to just quickly go through the filters that are available, you can search for an individual application either by the application number uh, or a publication number below that. You can also enter an attorney docket number. You can filter based on status. So if I pull down the status filter, I can see how many applications of my current data set uh, fall into each of these kind of buckets. So I'm able to specify if I just want to see either you know, pending applications or maybe I just want to see the issued applications. I can use any of these little boxes to kind of toggle those on or off. Right now, we haven't applied any, but if I want to see just, say, the allowed and issued applications, I can do that, or just the allowed and pending applications. We can kind of you know, mix and match those to, sort what, to meet whatever needs you have. Below that, we have the filing date, which you just saw us apply. We also have a disposition date filter, so the date on which an application was either allowed or abandoned, you can filter on that. A publication date filter as well. We also have an examiner filter and something that I want to kind of impress upon people with uh, something that I kind of want to impress upon people with uh, the examiner filters and several of these other filters is that these application counts next to each examiner, for instance, that are listed in the examiner filter. That gives you a really quick way to find out how many applications uh, 
belong to each of those options down in the examiner filter. So for instance, we can see that uh, this examiner, I think Melody Brown, uh, she has 661 of the current set of applications assigned to her. And you can do the same thing with a lot of these other filters as well. So for instance, the USPC class filter, CPC class filter, uh, the assignee is already selected to Ford, but if we look at the firm filter, we can see that uh, Ford does have a lot of applications that are assigned back to themselves uh, or that they prosecute in-house. We can also see the same thing for art units. So you can see that 3747 is one of the most popular art units for Ford. And then lastly, we have text center um, and then office action counts. So we can specify how many office actions uh, for each of the applications. So if we just wanna see applications that have had say at least three final office actions, we can do that. We can also specify the number of RCEs that have been filed. And then we have a customer number and registration number filter as well. So those are all of the filters that are available to you to kind of break down the information that you're seeing in platform by you know, various different uh, types of um, metrics or information about each of the applications. Up here at the top where we have filters highlighted currently, you can also switch over to your saved searches. So you'll see that we set a default view during setup. So that's my default view, which is highlighted right now because that's the view that we're looking at currently. Uh, we can also save as many searches as you'd like. So if you do have other data sets that you want to save, you can always save those and they will appear over in this screen. Uh, if you do want to kind of manage your saved searches, one quick way to do that is down here, the settings button in the very bottom left-hand corner. You do have access to your saved searches from here. So if you do need to delete any of your saved searches or if you want to edit something about them, you can head over there. Also, if you do forget to save a search and you're you know, wishing you had saved it in the past, you can go to your search history and see all of your search history so you can go back to whatever view it was that maybe you wanted to, wanted to keep and save as a search. So heading back to our search results, uh, I wanna give you a little bit more information about how to kind of navigate platforms. So for those of you that are used to Juristat um, in terms of just going to Juristat, pulling up an examiner report, pulling up uh, a business intelligence report or something like that. You do have the option to go back to that as well. So if you do kind of log in and you just need to pull up one examiner report or you're looking for a business intelligence report, over on the left-hand side, we have buttons to take you directly to those tools. So we have drafting at the top, we have examiner reports, and then we have business intelligence reports. The very top button is new search. So if you've you know, applied a bunch of filters, done a bunch of keyword searching and everything, uh, you need to just kind of clear everything out and start fresh. You can click that new search button to kind of clear out all of your filters, all of your text searches so that you can kind of get a fresh start at any time. And then over here on the right-hand side, uh, we have several different options in terms of A, getting data into or out of a Juristat platform and then viewing data within platform. So the first three icons over on this kind of top toolbar, save, import, and export. Obviously you can save your searches. So if I click save right now, since I've applied a filter to our default view that we set, I can always save changes to my default view or I can create a new search and name it whatever I want so I can come back to this view immediately. We can also import lists of applications. So if I click import CSV, um, what you can do with this is to, if you have a CSV with a list of either application numbers or publication numbers, you can import that list and save it as a search. So for instance, something that our, our clients have told us that they are looking forward to doing with platform is to have the ability to import kind of custom lists of applications that you know either they want to run some analytics on those, uh, want to find out you know, kind of how that batch of applications is doing versus another batch, whether it's, you know, one business unit versus another business unit or things like that. Uh, so that's a really quick way to do that. And you can save those searches and rerun those at any time and just have those kind of at your disposal. Next, we have the export button. So I'm not going to click export because that'll actually export all this data. But uh, the export button allows you to export anything that's in this table below um, that menu. Uh, to a CSV. 
So we're limited to about a thousand applications right now. I think we're working on increasing that to 10,000, but currently you can export lists uh, in tables like this with all of this information, uh, lists of applications up to 1000 apps. If you do need more data than that, uh, kind of a little tip that we have is to use that filing date filter to kind of chunk out your results. So if you have a, a list of 3000 applications that you need to export, you can always use the filing date filter to kind of break that down into smaller sets. And then once they're exported to a CSV, you can copy and paste them into one using Excel or any other spreadsheet software that you want to use. The next three buttons we have over here, charts, table, and cards, these represent three different ways to view information in platform. So right now we're looking at the table view. And I kind of like to tell people that platform really offers the ability to see data kind of from a really high level in the aggregate, but also from an individual application level. So it's kind of a, a bottom down or a top up kind of view that you can get of all of your application information. So right now we're looking at the table view and table view is incredibly useful for getting uh, you know, detailed kind of numerical or just biographical information about applications all in one place. You can sort it, you can filter it. Uh, it's a really great tool, especially in terms of you know, running some reports, running uh, saved searches that maybe you need to rerun uh, that you want to cover at your team's status meetings or things like that. Uh, so that's a really great way to do that. And we'll kind of walk through some examples of why that's useful in just a little bit. The next view that we have is the charts view. And I'm going to click over to the charts view. And what this is doing is running business intelligence style analytics on my set of search results that I've currently pulled up. So any set of applications that you can come up with using Juristat's keyword searching, using the filters, um, any set of data you can run business intelligence style analytics on. And so, you know, for those of you that have seen our business intelligence reports before, you're limited to pulling up a report for just a single firm or a single company. With this, you're able to run those reports, that same style of reports, and get that same information on any set of applications that you might be interested in. So for instance, right now, we're just looking at all of Ford's applications filed since 2016. So we can see kind of a breakdown of application status. We can see the number of applications filed year over year. We can see the allowance rate both over time and by technology center, the average number of months to disposition, the average number of office actions both to disposition and to allowance or abandonment, the number of extensions over time, the average applicant response over time, or I'm sorry, the average applicant response time over time. Uh, so that's the average number of months between receiving an office action and getting a response filed. We can also see the number of rejections citing each basis uh, issued year over year. So we can see which bases are the most popular. How is that changing over time? Same thing with the filings by Tech Center over time. So we can see where most of the applications for files are going. And then we also have the change in both the number and the number of words in dependent and independent claims. And this view is also customizable. So if you click up here next to uh, our different views, you can click edit charts. And this will pull up uh, the ability for you to select which charts you want to see. You can add, subtract charts. You can also move them around into any order that you're interested in. So it gives you a lot of options in terms of how you want to view these charts. And just cancel. And then this is our, uh, this is the charts view. So now we're going to go take a look at the cards view. So the charts view really gives you that kind of top down look at your data. Um, so kind of aggregating data and showing it to you all in one place, um, showing you statistics about the data. We're going to switch over to the card view. And the card view really um, provides more of the ability to see individual applications, get some key information about those applications in each of these application cards. You also do get some metrics over here on this screen as well, just to get a quick look at um, some statistics and summary statistics about your data set. So you can kind of use that to know whether there's something you want to explore in charts view. But looking at all of these applications in our data set, 
you can click on any one of these applications to go to a um, examiner or not an examiner, an application report uh, about this application that gives you a little bit more information. So we're going to go ahead and do that. Um, and I'm going to filter to add an office action count so that we have one that has a little bit more of a prosecution history to take a look at. Um, so just to show you how to use this office action counts filter, we have the option to specify how many office actions, uh, either all office actions, or you can specify non-final or final. So I'm going to say I want to see just applications that have at least two final office actions. So once I hit apply, my results are kind of recalculating to take that into account. And we'll take a look at, say, the second application on the list. And like Drew mentioned in the introduction, this is our new view for applications where you can come to get pretty much any ap application information that you really might need. Um, so we can take a look here. The, the default view shows you summary, description, and claims. But you can customize this view to whatever you need by selecting a drop-down menu and just picking what information you want to see in any of these three panes. So we can really customize that view. Also, if you need a little bit more kind of screen real estate to, to take a look at any of this information, you can use this button over here to toggle closed your filters. So if we close those, we can see that we get a little bit more room to take a look at this particular application. Scrolling down in the summary view, we've got some summary information up at the top. The drawings are next, and then the abstract. And then some bibliographic information about this particular application. I'll make that a little bit bigger for you. Uh, so we're looking at the application number. We can see the publication date, filing date, the status. Uh, we can see who the assignee is. And then we can also use this to get to more information that we might need during a prosecution. So for instance, if I need more information on Ford Motor Company, I can click on Ford Motor Company to pull up a business intelligence report. Or if I need some art unit information, I can click on the art unit to get art unit specific information. Also, you can access our examiner reports directly from here. So if I click on the examiner's name, it will take me into an examiner report for that particular examiner. We also have parent and child continuity data. So what we're showing here, uh, there aren't any parent or child apps for this particular application, but if there are, they will be listed here. And then below that, we have some information about office actions. So we can see what the office action is, whether it's the how many overall it is, uh, things like that. And then if you do have access to this office action module, this is something that's kind of additional to platform. You also can generate a shell response really quickly. So if there are some of you out there that do some in-house prosecution, that's a really useful, uh, quick way to generate a shell response, get some annotated cited art, et cetera. So to go back to our search results, we have to hit the back button on our browser. So I'm going to hit the back button and I'm going to open up those filters again. And so we've kind of walked through a lot of the information about how to navigate Juristat platform. So we're going to take a look at some of the use cases. So I'm going to clear out uh, this office action counts filter. So we get a little bit more information in our data set. And I'm going to head back to the table view. So the first thing that we talked about when we looked at the table view was that this is really useful in terms of kind of saving and generating reports that might be useful to uh, take a look at during status meetings or to go over with your team or to identify applications that might need a little bit of extra attention. Maybe something weird is going on with the application. There are a lot of office actions, something like that. So I'm going to take a look at kind of how to do that. So for instance, if I'm, if I'm at Ford and I have this particular data set pulled up, one thing that I might want to do is to just limit this to pending applications. So if I add that pending applications filter, I'm only going to see applications that are still uh, in their prosecution. So I have a better idea of, you know, these are all of the applications that we have outstanding and these are the ones that we might need to take a look at. Uh, one thing to note is that we do have an alerts feature. So anytime you see this little bell icon over here on kind of the, the left side of the table, 
if you want to receive an email every Monday morning that kind of summarizes changes that occurred in those applications for in, during the last week, you can turn on alerts for any applications by just clicking that little bell icon. You can turn them off the same way just by unchecking it. And then something that a lot of our, our team is finding really helpful is if I scroll over and I happen to have the column for number of office actions already added uh, to this table, one thing that's helpful is to sort by the number of office actions. And doing this allows us to see kind of, you know, applications where we have quite a few office actions, but the application is still pending. So we can take a look and see on these applications, you know, is there something that we need to, we need to work on with this application? What firm is handling it? Uh, what's the examiner? We can also add a ton of examiner information. So right now, um, I've only added about three different metrics. So I have the examiner's allowance rate, the examiner's allowance rate for applications with an interview included, and the examiner's allowance rate for applications without an interview. So this allows you really quickly without even having to pull up the examiner's report to see kind of, you know, is this an examiner where it's really important to interview or, you know, is this an examiner where it doesn't make too much of a difference? So scrolling down, we can kind of see all of these applications where we have about seven to, you know, up to 11 office actions and we're still pending. So these might be a good set to take a look at during any kind of status meetings and stuff like that. So you can always save this as a report. So if you do want to create and save a new search, you can always do that to rerun this every time you have that meeting. And so that information is just available for you immediately. But one thing that's really useful is, you know, you have the ability to add so much information about each application that, you know, if I'm looking at this and if I'm kind of taking a look at our interview strategy, for example, I can say, okay, well, I want to know how many interviews have actually been conducted for each of these applications. So I'm going to add the column for a number of interviews, which I did by just checking the box next to it and hit save. And now if I scroll over, the number of interviews appears here. And so one thing that you can note is, you know, for, for examiners where there's a large discrepancy between the examiner's allowance rate with an interview versus without, we can find those applications where that discrepancy exists and there's been no interview conducted. So for instance, this particular examiner, examiner Neves, uh, this application, we've had about seven office actions, and we can see from this data that the examiner's allowance rate pops up to about 79% with an interview, but it's down at about 37% without an interview. And also directly from this view, if you do want to, you can access an examiner report. So any of these uh, examiner names do link to our examiner report. So I'll open that in a, in a new tab really quickly. Um, so if you do want to kind of assist outside counsel in, dis in determining how you want to respond to an office action, you can access an examiner report really quickly just from this table view to get an idea of this examiner's preferences and how might be the best way to respond to um, your particular office action from this examiner. So for instance, this report, we can take a look at the office action response win rates. So we can see that uh, the win rate for this examiner after an interview is about 34%, which means about 34% of the time, uh, this examiner does uh, issue a notice of allowance after an interview, so immediately following an interview, versus about 12% for RCEs. So that's something to take into account and maybe something to um, highlight to your outside counsel if they haven't tried to interview with this examiner yet. The next thing is dispositions by rejection count. So here we can see that there haven't actually been any uh, disposed applications past that seventh office action or actually past the sixth office action. So that's something to definitely keep in mind. So, you know, if I'm looking at this application, this might be one where I think it's kind of past the time where it would be allowed. So maybe it's something that we should consider abandoning. And then also we have that interview information. So the allowance rate for applications with an interview included uh, versus those without any interviews included in their history. And then lastly, we can take a look at the appeals information. So if you do have an application where it might be more beneficial to appeal, you can find out here whether this examiner is likely to be overturned. Um, in this case, this examiner is not. So there, well, there's only been one application from this examiner that's gone all the way through to the PTAB, but the examiner was affirmed in that application. So it's kind of a, kind of a gamble with this particular uh, examiner. 
I'm going to go ahead and pause. Uh, if we have any questions so far, please feel free to drop those in that Q&A box. So I'll just hang out for a second. If you have any questions, please feel free to drop them in there. And uh, Parker will kind of give me a nudge and let me know what the question is. But if you do have questions, I'm happy to answer those as we go. Um, Platform does have a lot of information in it. So questions are completely understandable and welcome. So if there's anything that you uh, would like to know, just let me know. Parker's telling me that there aren't any questions so far. Uh, but if you do have any at any time, feel free to drop them in that Q&A box so that we have those for the end when we're going to go through the rest of the questions as well. So we've kind of taken a look at a couple of different use cases so far for this particular table view. And the first one was kind of a, you know monitoring your outside counsel, monitoring uh, how they're doing and how their applications are progressing. So it's a quick way to identify times where you know maybe my outside counsel needed to file a third RCE but didn't you know ask permission before doing it or something like that. Or you know if there's an application that's kind of racking up office actions but the examiner's allowance rate is you know kind of tanking. Maybe it's this one over here at about 29%. Uh, maybe we need to investigate either filing an appeal or abandoning the application. So it gives you a good, quick way to identify those kind of outlier applications. The next use case that we took a look at was using this information to assist outside counsel, or if you do in-house prosecution, to assist in responding to individual office actions. And then the third thing that I want to take a look at is um, kind of using our text searching abilities that we have in Juristat platform. And these can be used in a couple of different ways to be really helpful in terms of either responding to office actions or kind of monitoring uh, emerging technologies. So I'm going to go ahead and just start a new search. And so I clicked that new search button over here right below the J. Uh, so we're, we're just, you know, kind of looking at a brand new search right now. The default view for a brand new search is applications that have just been published. So it's sorted by publication date. So these are really, really new applications. But you know, if I'm interested in finding out more information about applications that are you know, relating to some kind of emerging technology, I can use our text search to do that and find those applications. So for instance, um, I can search for the words blockchain and cryptocurrency. So once I've typed my keywords in that little search box up there, I just hit enter to find applications where both of those words appear. Just as a note, uh, if you do have a space between words, the default operator is an and. So it's going to look for applications where both of those words appear. We do offer Boolean operators. So if you want to kind of customize your search a little bit more, you can do an or. You can also do a not or a few other things uh, if you do need to do that. There's a little um, question mark over here in the right side of the text search box. So that gives you a little bit more information about search. So if you just need to kind of refresh your memory about what options there are for basic operators in performing a search, or if you need some example searches to kind of get you started, we have those available right here. And then we also have some additional documentation available uh, through this link. So that'll give you some additional information, some additional example searches, things like that. So right now, uh, we've searched the full text of applications for blockchain and cryptocurrency. And you'll see we have a list of about 417 applications. And we can also use some of these kind of quick statistics to get an idea of, is this a technology area that's kind of booming? Is it dying? Uh, so we can see blockchain. We've gone from 51 applications filed in 2015 up to about 135 in 2016. We can also use the filters over here to get an idea of where these applications are going or where they're coming from. So for instance, if I click on the Technology Center filter, I can see that most of these applications are going either to the 3600s, which is about, looks like about two thirds of the applications are going there, followed by the 2400s. I can also get an idea of who's filing these applications. So for instance, if I wanna know who's filing all of these blockchain cryptocurrency applications, I can click on the assignee filter to see that 
Uh, Bank of America has filed quite a few of them, followed by IBM, et cetera. And then we can also see who the assignees are, uh, excuse me, who the examiners are that are looking at these applications. We can see what USPC or CPC classes they're being assigned to and all of that kind of information that you know, gives you an idea of how popular these are, um, kind of what that batch of application looks like at the USPTO. If we want to refine the search a little bit more, so this is just, you know, blockchain and cryptocurrency are appearing somewhere in the application or somewhere in the application's documents. We can refine this a little bit further. So if you click this drop down next to where you would type your keywords, we can see that we have options to specify what documents we want to look in. So for instance, um, I might just want to see applications where the title references blockchain. So I can perform that search and maybe, you know, depending on what technology you're looking at, maybe that's going to give you a little bit more discrete of a data set. So for, for your purposes, it might be a little bit better to see just applications that are um, very obviously related to this type of technology. So that gets you down to about 265 applications that reference the word blockchain in the actual title. And again, we can always go over to our charts view to see kind of some information about those applications. So we can see what the allowance rate looks like. Um, it looks like most of these applications uh, are still pending. So we have about 220 that are pending. It looks like we've got 37 that have been allowed. And very few have been abandoned so far. Only one has been abandoned. Um, but we're looking at kind of an increasing number of filings year over year. And then we can also see the allowance rate over time, the months to disposition, uh, things like that. So we have an idea of what's going on with these particular applications. And especially if we take a look at the rejection bases, we can see that um, Alice rejections <laughs> are not uncommon with these particular applications. Also, we get a lot of 101 rejections, which would obviously make sense in terms of Alice, but that's something to definitely keep an eye on. Um, you know, you can look at all these different rejection bases and know, okay, well, if my company is preparing to file an application in this space, this is what I'm likely to, to be looking at in terms of rejections. Um, I can also see the likely technology centers and see kind of how those are changing over time. And then if we go back up to the top and go back to cards view, obviously we can dig into any of these individual applications to see kind of, you know, who's filing, who's filing it, what is it actually claiming, things like that. Or we can dig in on a specific firm to see, okay, well, we're about to file, uh, you know, an application in this specific technology area, which of our outside counsel has filed in that area the most for us. And you can also kind of compare them. So, you know, if I'm looking for somebody to file an application in this area, I can say, okay, well, let's just see how, you know, one of my outside counsel has performed. So if I apply a firm filter, I can just look at that firm's applications that match my search criteria. So I can see kind of how they're performing in this particular technology space. And I can always go back to the charts and see, okay, well, how many applications have they filed? What's the allowance rate? Um, things like that. What's the, the average number of months to disposition? Um, so we can get some information about individual firms as well. So if you're needing to find outside counsel for your application in a particular technology area, you can do that. Um, going back to the cards view, we can also save this search. So if it's something that you want to monitor kind of going forward, you can save the search so you can rerun it at any time. So that'll appear over in our saved searches. So that's something that we can kind of continuously monitor. And every time you run that search, the data will be updated and you'll have brand new information. Uh, you know, any applications that have since been published that match that filter will be added to that. So it's a great way to keep up to date on things that are happening. And then if there are applications that are interesting to you and you do want to get those alerts again from this screen, if you do want to check on that little that little bell in each of the application cards, you can get those kind of alert emails on Monday morning to let you know of any significant changes in those applications. Uh, so that is about it for me. Um, I know that's a lot of information. So I did want to leave about you know 15 or so minutes at the end today for any questions that you might have. 
happy to answer any questions now. Um, if you do log in and start playing around with it and you find that you have questions, again, I think a lot of you are familiar with this, but again, we do have an, a chat box down here in the corner. And if you need to chat with us, just hit new conversation and start typing a message. And I think our average response time is like one minute. So I know several of you have been in there. Also, you can uh, kind of get some quick information from our help center here. So some basic information about platform appears right at the top. Uh, so if you do need to kind of have a refresher on how to get started, you can just click on that article directly within this window. And it'll take you through kind of a, a walkthrough of how to get platform set up. You can also close that. And you, if you need some help with application searching, click on that application searching article. Uh, so we give some information about the different types of searches that you can perform. Um, and there are those operators again. So if you do need a list of those. And that's a, a ton of information for you today. So I want to kind of stop there. Uh, but if you do have any questions, um, Parker is taking a look at our, our Q&A box. So if you do have any questions, feel free to type those in there. And I'm happy to answer those now. Um, if not, I don't want to keep you here any longer than necessary. I know you're all busy. So if you do want to head out, uh, do feel free. And I really appreciate you being here today. And I, I hope this was helpful for you. All right. Well, it doesn't look like we have any questions right now. So I'm going to go ahead and release you. So I hope you all have a great rest of your day. And please feel free anytime you have questions to either jump in that chat box or um, feel free to send me an email directly. Thanks, everybody. Have a great day.